did you see the way Arsenal celebrated beating City by one goal that was a deflection? I'm like, why are you excited? You know what I'm saying? What happened? Did he win the Grammy? Yeah, oh. damn. He acting like a fucking trophy shit. Nigga, turn the fuck up. Ah, uh, so gross. The last time Arsenal beat Manchester City was 2015. Do you want to hear a few names from that Arsenal squad? Oliver Giroud, Theo Walcott, Serge Gnabry. You didn't know he was there? Yeah, just for a little bit. Alexis Sanchez. Hold up. Peter Jack. I look at the tweets and start sucking my teeth. Beating City for the Carabao feels like a title. That's Arteta's words, not mine. You would think after the experience Arsenal had last season, bottling a foregone conclusion should keep those gunners humble. I remember who I'm talking about, though. It's those Arsenal people. So you know what? Everybody steppers were fucking and everybody breakfast and I'm about to clear up my plate. <laughs> When I show up, it's motion picture, blockbuster, the goat with the golden pen, the top toucher, the spot rusher, spray this whole shit up, the crap duster. It takes a shanked shot that concusses one of our players in order for you to win. A win is a win. Sure, could your willingness to embrace short-sighted victories be the reason your club consistently falls short? You now have two weeks to relish being on top of the table. Wait. You're still in second and beating the mighty Manchester City. You could see the players were well trained. Arsenal changed their look multiple times in a, the first half. When did y'all have time to prepare for this? Y'all know there's other clubs in this league, right? Liverpool, Tottenham, beat us at third place every season. And how has the last five of the seven years gone? Gunners. Hearing this can say that I'm hating, downplaying the moment. Here's Pep before the match against Arsenal. Games, we are top of the league and in Champions League, we make an incredible step forward to qualifying in Champions League. That the, in this month is the most important thing by far, is qualify until February, restart the Champions League being there. The goal is securing our spot in Champions League knockout. February is when we'll look at the Premier League table and see where City stands. That is when we turn those bright lights on. That's when it's put up or shut up. Take whatever you want from the match. My focus is on squad. Premier League is not over. Champions of the first half of October, Arsenal FC. I'm sure that comes with a plaque. A $25 gift card to Greg's. Uh, at least, nah, I don't know, a high five or something. You guys just enjoy yourselves. Have a good time. Enjoy the international break. Just know we're watching. I hate the most is when you're the wonderful. I hate it. We're making art over here, baby. You have permission to make a mistake. Capitalize that A. Shout out to Olivier Giroud. Both oh, Ruben. Yeah, I'm a, I'm AC a Milan's number one goalkeeper oh. kid sellers. I fuck everyone and send everyone. I think we're forgetting the most important thing. Oh we're my god. We're focusing just on ourselves. There's basically half a whole generation who's never seen we're Arsenal be City. We Congratulations. The There's no better place than taking the next step here. Show ourselves out there how much we want to win it again. We win four of the last five Premier League guys. Four of the last five Premier League. Are we going to do it again? Don't ask me again about doubles, triples, quadruples, quadruples, six tuples, seven tuples. So. Uh, I told myself I wasn't going to yell today. So I'm going to do my best, Shady Game. It's all happening. I napped. I'm rested. I have a lovely martini that I made. Like, mm, it's so great. I got some nice little like 
lemon strips in there. So I got some more of what is aesthetically pleasing for me too. Like the vibes are immaculate on me. No yelling. This is episode 71 of Shades of Blue. We are the most comprehensive Manchester City podcast covering both the men's and women's game, spanning from the Atlantic Ocean to the Rocky Mountains. We make an art over here, capitalize the A. My name is Crunk Chocolate. I am with Tom Bomb and Tarek. Everything good, my show bro. I'm still coming down from everything that happened for from City today, but uh, other than that, I, I think uh, we're yeah. good. Yeah, this weekend sucks. I'm ready to go back to work. Uh, I just it, it's been miserable being a sports fan this weekend, and I can't wait for it to be over. We don't need to go into it, but for maybe new listeners, don't even repeat it. Don't even Very say scary. it. It's that it's that okay, hurtful. Definitely. It brings tears to my eyes. Weird, weird um, uh, for those not in the U.S. based. Uh, um, Tarek is uh, experiencing uh, football pain. Um, and uh, well, actually, I'm experiencing all of it. And, and, it's all just and foot compound one after another. And football pain. Yeah. Yeah, it's all football. encompassing everywhere I turn. It's disappointment and 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 frustration. And I'm gonna not take that out on the listener. I don't think. <laughs> all right, that's appreciated. And uh I guess we don't even have to talk about it specifically. Just if you're watching on YouTube, just look at his surroundings. And take in, I guess, maybe decoration and go with that from there. How about that? How about that? <laughs> um, what I need you to do right now is if you're watching YouTube, hit that thumbs up for us. Show us some love. Leave a comment on what you thought on the episode. Maybe a retort to something one of us said. Let's say you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pops, any podcast streaming app service that allows you to rate we need that five star rating immediately please thank you if you put a review in the app i'll read it out loud on the show gave you some time to pause you'll get used to that i honestly do it inconsistently so you won't be used to it i like changing it up and i also forget um today well you know we're gonna start the episode with our baby blue baddies they're delightful they're fantastic it took everything in one ref's being to to take the club down in order for the mightiest team in the WSL to draw against our baby wood baddies. We got to give them the respect, got to show them some love. They're first and foremost after that. Some Champions League action. See, <laughs> we win there. Champions League. At least we got Champions League, right? That that's nice. That's something. That's a thing. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about our match against Arsenal. Premier League. <laughs> applause, shock all. Applause. Our Premier League overview that will round out the episode. Men are on a break, women ain't. At least someone's working, you know? These lazy men going and doing their international breaks. Just get over here. Um, let's go. Let's let's get into the show, shall we? Um Did I miss anything? No. Um I've uh Sharky Charlie has been here and I am super excited. We have and big news next week for the show. Some expansion, some addition, some great vibes. It's coming for you. <laughs> Baby, you don't know what you do to me. Between me and you, I feel a like chemistry. 
Tom Bomb. What are those baby blue baddies doing to him? Um, I, playing their asses off in 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 a lot of different ways. Because my gosh, they gotta give it up to the to, to Manchester City women because um. They put in work today, um, and yeah, um, we played Chelsea, who some may argue might be the most talented squad, talented team in all of um, women's football. Like maybe not the most accomplished, um, at least not internationally, um, but certainly in this league in uh, the WSL uh, in the UK. So. We do have to give them their their respect here. Um, and we lined up as such. 19-year-old Kiara Keating in goal. We'll have more on that later. Uh, Esme Morgan, Alana Kennedy, Alex Greenwood, Lia Alexandri. Alex Greenwood made her 100th appearance um, in uh, a Manchester City kit in this uh, particular match. Shout out to her. Uh, in the midfield, we had uh, Yui Hasegawa, Philippa Angledahl, Jill Roard. Up top, we had Chloe Kelly, Lauren Hemp, and Mary Fowler. So a lot of what you saw in the last match, um, you su- replace uh, Angledahl for, Castellan- or, yeah, for Castellanos, and um, Esme Morgan comes in for Leila Wahabi with the red card. Um, Kiara Keating started in goal um, after the match um, when Garrett Taylor was asked about it. Um, Garrett Taylor confirmed that Ellie Roebuck was not left out for suspension. She just was not selected as part of the squad. Um, when asked to clarify, um, mm. yeah. So uh, he said that. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer. Uh Lord, uh, I rebuke any and everything. Shout out to Rope. I don't know what's going he did, on. He did say that, like, we have three really, really good keepers. So, I don't, and, and we, we do. do. So that's that is a luxury. Um, this match uh, started off pretty fast for City. It was almost as though um, City wanted to make sure that they got all of their chances um, in the first fifteen minutes. Um, Chelsea looked a little. Um, I won't say lackadaisical, but I do think that the match time did affect them. Like, I I don't think that they might just might not have been ready. Like they seemed sleepy. Uh, um, I mean, we, we were too. So yes, but like, at least like we brought a little bit more energy than they did. And I think, and I do, and I do think that part of that, like, I'm not even like, I do think that part of that is the fact that Lauren James kind of like, was started out out wide uh, when Emma Hayes deployed um, their deployed them Chelsea uh, after after about fifteen minutes fifteen twenty minutes out however you did see her move more centrally and that did kind of change the match but it kind of almost seemed like she was throwing a, like a temper tantrum on the field and like um, the mm-hmm. rest of Chelsea like fed off of that like I like in in thinking back on that like that was really like kind of how I felt about that in the moment um so city uh are um <clears throat> excuse me having a lot of chances um all of a sudden chloe kelly gets the ball at the top of the box after um uh pass that mary sent to her was deflected and she just arrowed it in i mean musevich had no prayer at that like i mean it, like it just went like it was almost parabolic yes. in its flight trajectory is the is the best way to put it um and it was lovely. so city's up uh one nil after the seventh minute um this is where the game starts to get wonky um so there were one two three four five six seven eight nine there were nine cards handed out in this match nine oh like just um Emily Hayslip has to like her arm has to be tired because she did a lot of this. A lot of a lot of this. Um Lauren James gets a yellow card in the eleventh minute um for a pretty cynical foul. Um then that's when you start to see Emma Hayes move Lauren James more in centrally. Um 
Alex Greenwood does foul her in the 17th minute. Uh, uh, like a very professional foul earns the yellow card. Yeah. Um, the course of play kind of goes back and forth. Like I think we talked about uh, this with Jess, and we asked, or we asked, the, or I'd asked them if this was going to be kind of a match where um, we let Chelsea have the ball, um, and you you really kind of saw that. But Chelsea wasn't necessarily terribly effective in their build up. I did think that um, Neem Charles was important for them in their build up. Um, excuse me. Uh, so. Once she got a yellow card in the 35th minute, um, I I know on the watch along. I was uh, also shout out to everybody who watched along on the watch along. We appreciate y'all. Um, hey. yes. um, when I I was think when I we were on the watch along, I said like we need to go after um, Neem Charles like specifically, like we need to really like um, do this. So. At that point, like, in the 37th minute, Laya Alexandri is fouled. Laya Alexandri says something to the referee about being fouled. Laya Alexandri is given a card. Laya Alexandri is still on the ground while all of this is happening to restart the match. Alex Greenwood takes most of our restarts, just lining the ball up. The total time was, in fact, 17 seconds. I do know that the FA has made a, a point of emphasis in all of their leagues to um, get rid of time-wasting behaviors. And so in that moment, uh, it appeared that the referee, while La Alexandri is on the ground for half of that time, the referee decided to brandish another yellow card to Alex Greenwood which meant that was her second, and she was given a red card. Um, please, please tell me why you always leave. Please tell me why you always leave. I, underst I understand the, the, the thought process behind this, um, and there is, uh, like, you know... And I think Charlie even said it on the men's pre-match show um, about like how, you know, like these are the, like she, he's not going to blame the ref, but like these are the rules. Like, I also think that like you, you have to take, like as a referee, you do have to take into, in, into account what the match state is, what is going on around the match. Um, and like the, how large the match is. Um, so I do not believe that um, uh, Emily Hayslip did the best job of that. Um, so that meant City were down to 10 um, in the 38th minute. So in the 38th minute... Um, oh, no, and then, then immediately after that, I'm sorry, Chloe Kelly also got a yellow card for um, talking to the referee. I forgot about that. Um, also... Uh, Oh, she was the TBD on the that we couldn't figure out on the live stream. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, yellow card for dissent. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then gave a lot of those. Yes. To city yes, city. and a lot of like, including the what ended the match or ended the half, which was Jill Roard also getting a yellow after like after the whistle had been blown for. Halftime. Um, so it kicks the ball. I want to see her kick. Like, did did she launch it into the crowd, or was it just like a hard pass across the pitch? Like, I want. I wish I could see what this kick the ball that received a yellow. Also, like. like, what time is to be wasted once the match has been called to halftime? Correct. Like that does not. And where's the descent? Because she's not talking to you. I I don't get it. Anyway, um, come out in the second half. Um, I know that we had a big discussion, and that's when my uh, uh, power on my laptop went out. Sorry about that to the live stream. Um, <laughs> yeah. who to bring yeah, out? And I said Lauren Hemp. Um, it, and it was actually kind of weird because like as soon as. Um, we went out. It was um, it was almost as though 
Gareth had trained for this situation based off the fact that Layla had gotten a red card in the previous match. Like, what do we do when another player is sent off? And like, it was like Lauren Hemp knew immediately that she was playing. We started to play five at the back. You, uh, Lauren Hemp knew that she was like the left wing back um, character in that scenario. Um, so, uh, and we were playing relatively well. I, um, I said, don't, or don't take Mary Fowler off because you didn't want to hurt her confidence. Um, unfortunately, that is what ended up happening. Um, she did. She was subbed off at halftime for Kirsten Kasparai. Um, and then at that point, um, Chelsea just was like, okay, well, we're going to start going for this. Um, so they subbed in um, Yelena Kankovic for Sophie Ingle, um, who's basically like Yelena Kankovic is basically a 10. Um, and... Sam Kerr for me official. That was uh, Sam Kerr's uh, WSL season WSL debut. Um, hmm. City um, was holding firm and playing well. Like they were still um, when they could get out on the break, they would. Um, but being a player down, um, they were just very compact um, and just did, made it very difficult for Chelsea to break down. And you could see Chelsea getting frustrated by that. Um, so in the um, 60, 60th and 61st minute, um, you have uh, Melanie Leipolz and Fran Kirby coming on for Aaron Cuthbert and Jess Fleming. Um, was Oh, and then you had um, Lauren Hemp get her first, get a yellow card for... Um, Descent for speaking back to the referee on a um, goal kick, corner kick situation, um, which you don't love, but okay. Like um, this, this was this was, was after, after like yeah, yeah this was after for, yeah, like, this was after yeah. like Ashley Lawrence like almost murdered her, um, but and was yeah. not given a card of any description card at like, all. Just Didn't like even look at it, she yeah. I was like, away. "Oh, okay, we're doing this. Cool." Um, yeah. uh-huh. so there was that. Um, Emma Hayes was smart enough uh, to uh, get Ashley Lawrence off the pitch because I think that she knew what was going on in that match, and she did take her off in the seventieth minute. Um, we were still holding firm. Um. And then in the uh, making sure that they didn't have any chances, staying compact in the 80th minute, uh, we just needed some new legs because uh, Chloe Kelly was basically playing the lone striker up top. Um, so and Felipe Angledal and Yui Hasegawa were just and Jill Roard were just like literally running for days and days and days and days. Mm-hmm. So um, Bunny and uh, Ruby come on for Chloe Kelly and Felipe Angledal. Um seemed to have a good um it seemed to be a good uh substitution as it like it gave some new life into the the squad and we were able to get the ball up the pitch a little bit um almost immediately after they they both came on however that led to like a chelsea mini break almost um and in that mini break um our makeshift left wing back had to foul lauren james and that foul was deemed worthy of a yellow card and that player was sitting already on a yellow card. So that per- player, Lauren Hemp, had to be taken off for a red. Um, so that left us down to nine. Um, who gee, many Christmas. Um, so uh, <laughs> we make a sub in the 85th minute, bring on Blackstad for Roared. Good legs. Um, in the stoppage time. Stoppage time is announced, and it is eight minutes. And eight minutes is, in fact, an eternity. And after all of this running and defending, in the fifth minute of stoppage time, the ball goes out for a corner kick, all based off a well-defended play from um, Alana Kennedy. Alana Kennedy, after that, begins to cramp up. Alana Kennedy has to leave the field um, while the corner is being taken. So that means that City defended a corner with literally seven outfield players. Um, The corner comes in, um, and on the um, 
I'm not even sure who got first contact to it, um, but uh, Kiara Keating saved it, um, got it out, and it was a great save. Um, Incredible save. Just amazing. Um, kicked out, um, kind of pinged around. Yui was covering the near post, and unfortunately, um, she also whiffed, um, as some other players did whiff on the ball too. Um, she whiffed, but at the goal line, and Guru Wrighton's very weak shot did go in in the sixth minute of stoppage time, um, leveling the match. Um, the uh, and then I think um, the what, didn't it like go on for at least another like six minutes after that? Yeah, it was a long time because. Uh, uh... Uh, sorry, a Chelsea player went down. I can't remember who. A Chelsea player went down, and then they added more time on top of that. It, yeah, it went on for entirely too long. And then the ball went out, and there was stalling on that. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. <sighs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, City was able to um, hang on for a point. Chelsea also gets a point. Um, this result, um, puts City in third, uh, behind Leicester and Liverpool, um, who are the only two teams in the WSL to win both of their opening matches, opening two matches, um, which is kind of amazing to think about. Uh, so, um, that does mean that, um, the following three players are out for the midweek match against Everton uh, for the Conti Cup. Um, that would be Leila Wahavi, Alex Greenwood, and Lauren Hemp. So I would expect that you would see um, club captain uh, Steph Houghton in uh, relatively soon uh, for at least the midweek match. Um, I I don't know if it will make any other defensive stubs maybe lie a play i don't know play center back with her um yeah. i mean good th- good news is we should we might see bunny this we, time. it is a possibility that we see a bunny start in this but i also think that and i think that I, I know that i said this on the on the live stream um you're def we're definitely going to see um ruby mace uh feature in this upcoming match i would imagine that this would be yes. a match that you would see uh laura coombs in um definitely going to see jess park in this match um probably see dana start as well um so the it will will i'm not can particularly worried um everton um has not been in particularly great form they've lost their two matches um both against uh brighton and uh lester um now, while it does appear that Leicester is at the top of the table, um, we've only played two matches. But as Charlie uh, did point out um, earlier, like it's only a 22 match season, so like there's only so many losses that you can take. Um, and I know that Gareth said this last season, like sometimes a draw can feel like a loss. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but in these comp- competitions, like I'm not like Everton. Um, has not shown a whole lot necessarily um, in any of the matches that they played. I mean, I'm fairly certain that they got, um, yeah, they lost 2-1 at home, and then they lost 2-1 or 1-0 to Leicester. This match, um, the next match is at Walton Hall Park, um, where Everton women play, um, which is a tough place to play. Uh, But I, I still think that no ma- even with the amount of red cards that we're sitting on, uh, we should still be- come back in this match just fine. Yeah, I think more so because uh, of it. I, I, if they needed any more inspiration mm-hmm. than going into the season, I feel the baby blue baddies had. Here we go. Right now. And, and like I feel like they should be so energized and so inspired and from that match chelsea have to have questions like have to i i and i know 
the fact that somehow City just has Emma Hayes number is a positive, yes. But also, you, they struggled earlier in, in the first match until obviously running it up at the end. And also, uh, you mentioned it about our episode, but a uh, quick shout out to Jesse Parker Humphrey. Uh, they were uh, fantastic and so fun to yes. chat with. And I can't wait to uh, have them on again when we face them again in the yes. season. It's, uh, yeah, so uh, check out that episode because overall it wasn't really at the end we talked about the match and a lot of it was about Chelsea and even their thoughts on City and stuff like that so I, I felt like it was it's a great episode we have a lot of episodes even though they're past dated they're good listens it, it was a really good listen it was a really cool experience to talk to them yeah. and um, you should um, all definitely go give them a follow follow their work um, I know they have a um, sub stack this Newsletter, yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, FlyingGeese.com. Yes, yes, definitely go check them out. Um, they are definitely creating some dope content over there. Um, and then uh, uh, the league match uh, is next week. Uh, we will play Bristol City, currently sitting at, About to beat them currently down. sitting at the bottom of the table uh, because of goal difference because <laughs> they got spanked by Leicester. Um, and they got spanked by um, Tottenham uh, this past weekend. Uh, we play them Sunday uh, morning um, at the Joy Stadium. Um, you know that uh, we want to make sure that uh, we understand that that's a place where we do not drop points. So, um, and hopefully we do, don't have players sent off. And it's wi- it's wild that yeah. like this this is the second consecutive week that. Um, City played a city play a match. City have at least a player sent off for a red, a red card. Yeah, it, it, the good thing is it is Bristol City. Uh, our, the first two times they played each other back in 2014, uh, they beat City actually in back to back matches. Since then, straight dominance on the City end. Even if you just stick with this decade and try to do recency, uh, our big blue baddies have outscored. Bristol City twenty three to twenty one to three. Excuse me. Uh, I would love to believe Bunny will be as healthy as she can be by that match. Um, what I think our last match we played them, we beat them eight one. Yeah, was that, that was in the, in the FA Cup. Yeah, it was it was eight one, and then it was six zero three one before that, th- or three zero before that, eight one before yeah. that. This is a fantastic match, league match, to have after a very tough Chelsea definitely, match. Definitely, so I am very much looking forward to this. Shout out to Bristol, but also sorry for what they're about. And, it, and it, it'll be a, a good show of uh, the depth of quality that City has within their side because this, there, are, there are very good and talented players that play for this, this squad. So... Um, yeah, that'll it'll be good to see them. And we didn't um, give our girl, oh. mm-hmm. baby curls legend, Kiara Keaton, player of the match. The love, the roses, like goodness gracious, there is nowhere in that goal space she can't reach. Like it. Her ability, her anticipation, her confidence, her assuredness. There, there... The way that she was catching some of those balls was just like uh, like reaching them. It was it was beautiful. Like I was I was so there proud. were a couple of shots that Maybe Chelsea did hit that hit off the crossbar, but like she yeah. she was always there for them. Like even if they were yes. if they would have dipped down a bit, like she was still there for the save. And like just the amount of bounce that she has, the amount the the courage that she has protecting her box. Um she's fearless in there. Like um her and then like her distribution is great. Um just shout out to her. Like um she definitely earned that player of the match um 
award and uh yeah like i i so like so proud of her like just so incredibly proud of her cannot say enough good things about um kr keating and the growth that we've seen in her just in the last two and a half seasons we can yeah we can see why ellie is potentially sad and even why she's past macgyver just the talent is oozing and so young yes. it's like oh, she's only going to get right. better it's insane it's insane yeah today when i was watching because i only caught like the second half of this match but um I, I I agree with everything you said. We got to give these ladies all of the credit in the world because they fought under some ridiculous situations and circumstances, but they just kept fighting. They didn't give up. Um, but I can't help but feel like, you know, they talk about how a draw can feel like two points dropped. Yeah. We were so close to having all three points that, um, while I recognize how great they did and how hard they fought, it still feels like oh, we lost two points there. Um, and that's, you know, uh, uh, it's not their fault. Um, again, you can only do so much. Uh, so to come out of it with the draw is great. Um, all things considered. Um, but we were what two three minutes away from the end of the match in theory it's just like uh you just needed to just hold on just a little bit longer honestly once we were down to once we were down to 10 there like the way that we were playing there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to get all three points now when lauren hemp went off the pitch I was like, oh, this is a little iffy. And then I watched Chelsea play for five minutes. I was like, oh, no. Like, this is, like, we're we're yep. still going to be fine. We're still going to be fine. And then yep. I watched Alana Kennedy's cramp up, and I said, oh, shit. <laughs> um, right before a right. corner on yes, top of yes. that. Yes, I mean. It's just like, yeah. That, it's just like the art yeah, that, that was when I was like, oh. Um, and that was, of course, yep. you know prescient because that was the moment that um they broke through but i will also say um in it like yes we in a way it feels like we dropped two points but it is like knowing that the top four from last season manchester or chelsea manchester united arsenal manchester city are all sitting on four points and both drew each other essentially um that basically like to me the season is going to come down to like are you gonna are are these four teams gonna beat the teams that they're supposed to beat and then like through uh or so i'm sorry arsenal only has one point i apologize because they lost to liverpool um so basically are you gonna beat the teams that you are supposed to beat and while you, like in then there will be like a series of rounds against like these other three teams. Um, so rounds one and two were played today. So like eventually once, you know, we play every, like all four of those teams play each other, you know, home and away, like that's what will decide the league to me. So like this week, basically um, even though rounds one and two were played, like it's pretty much even in the fact that Man U, Chelsea, uh, and our, yeah, Man U, Chelsea, and Man City all are sitting on three points. Or four points, my bad. Let's go. I am. Yes, I did leave the match bummed about the two points lost, but I was, I was so excited. And like, seeing the energy that our subs came on and brought, there was a moment where, uh, Ruby had a tackle and she was like sliding out of bounds, popped up and was just like, come on. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I was pumped. It was just, I love to see this. this is the energy, the stadium was packed. You're seeing the Joy logo everywhere. Mm -hmm. That means money. It, it really 
does feel like, man, this team, this is going to be a fun year, and next year is going to be a more fun year. I, I can't, I'm excited to see double in Niels Nielsen do his team in a couple more transfer windows. I, w- I will forward. be interested to see what, um, what the winter transfer window looks like. Um, that, like, will will we still carry three goalkeepers? Um, we did that in the past because um, in 20, you know, 2022, like 2021, like we needed them, all of them. Um, Kiara Keating played when she was 16. So um, y- yeah, like, do you, do, do you, I don't know. Do, do you need to carry three? Um, we'll see. Um, Can you keep three goalkeepers happy? Ooh, that is an excellent question. That's like, I feel like you almost have to get rid of one, but you know, this, it's it's different in the women's game because the money isn't the same. Right. We've got three really good keepers. You would be able to get a decent amount of money for them in the men's game. Right. I don't know what you get from in the women's game and how what you can turn around and do with that money. Right. If you can't take that money and go bring in or fill another hole or a gap somewhere. Does it make sense to get rid of that person? Right. Now, again, if they're miserable and it's causing an issue in the locker room, potentially maybe you do it that way. And I'm not saying that that's the case, but um, I guess any money you can make back is great, but you just got to see what, what, what's out there. Yeah. And I'm going to say it to game thing. I'm very much enjoying what Gareth is doing. And he did in his own Gareth way say something about the fish meat. It was in his Gareth Taylor style, so it wasn't it was very polite, but he said something. I mean progress is progress, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh oof. Well, um, yeah, sitting on yeah. four points, third in the league, um, going into a Conti Cup match, um, you feeling hungry, you kind of know what's going on. Um, yeah, that's that's what we got. Um, and uh, right. we would hope that um, you will join us for more of our Baby Boo Addies content, please. And thank you. Please. And our next watch along is for the Manchester Derby later this month. You know, we had to do that. And I have some fun guests. I befriended this uh, United. (laughs) This is so ridiculous. Uh, She's cool people, but uh, she's a United TikToker. Okay. She's. Like, really funny, okay. actually, though. Like, we'll make fun of her own club. Uh, like, great humor. Um, I'm going to have her come through. I feel like I ha- might have another guest, or even two. Like, I, I've, it's the Derby. We kind of need all the chaos. It's going to be, it's going to be a real good time. Trust we me. had a great time this morning. <laughs> That's, yes. And especially now that I'm making more and more friends, I'm like, where can I just, Plug them in and just do silly, make let's make silly content. Let's hang ourselves. Also, uh, shout out to Ken who joined us on the Arsenal kickoff show. Him and I try to do a uh, breaking bread for City Arsenal, and I was gonna really sip a public listen. I wasn't gonna put it on Patreon. Uh, Riverside, you were messing up, bro. Like <laughs> it was bad, but. It would have been hilarious because he was just trolling and I was falling for it because it was angering me because I knew listeners would hear him and he just sounded like an asshole and he sounded like an idiot. And I know these dudes, they know football, they can actually talk to stuff. And he was just coming around being a goof. And I was like, bro, you look stupid right now. (laughs) And this is not what my fans want. You are doing what you think youtube listeners want like this isn't the energy but it was it was hilarious because i was screaming at him 
because he was being so stupid. Uh, the times. Oh, um, also, uh, I, uh, I have to shout out yeah. uh, Casey Stoney, uh, manager of the San Diego Wave, who yeah. um, last night made comments that I am sure are going to get her fined by uh, NWSL, um, and also tweeted out how the egregiousness of um, the refereeing in this particular match uh, against Chelsea. Um, so uh, she is aiming to get fined by uh, two different uh, leagues uh, for commenting on the refereeing, and that is absolutely legendary behavior, and uh, we love to see it. Love to see it. Respect. Salute to a real one. Oh, oh gosh, this again. Golly, <laughs> Chiefs, this song does not slap, though. That is the unfortunate thing about it. It's not slapping. It's just like. When do you cut it off immediately? That's the answer. Oh. Champions League, Leipzig. Um, shout out to them. They made it a fun match. Uh, starting for City was Ederson in goal. Diaz, Akanji, Walker, Rodri, Rico Lewis, Foden, Silva, Grealish, and Holland up top. I felt fantastic having Rodri back, and I knew that there was no way we were losing. Uh, these lightning kits, though, let's take our time. Uh, seeing them on our melanated players, it did sell me a little bit on those kits. It's still a no. I need to see more wins in it. What do you, what do y'all think about them, like, the lightning kits? I said this on Twitter when they first came out. They remind me of uh, like Mumra transforming um, on Thundercats, um, but uh, I don't. And I mean, like, technically, they're worth yeah. I mean, I, 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 I really dig it though. Like personally, like if I, of of yeah. kits of the three kits, that would probably be the one that I would want to get. Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Actually, I like it. It's out of the three. Of course, the home is my preference just because it's the traditional whatever uh but then it's this one i don't like the white or whatever color with the burgundy i, I don't like that at all it, we could throw that in the trash and i'd be perfectly fine Whoa. yeah i have learned i'm on an island of my own about that away kit but i absolutely adore that kit so much it is i i'm waiting until I get my damn treble kit from Manchester City that I'm not supposed to get till literally Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm not buying anything else from you, Manchester City, until I get that kit. Once I get that kit and it arrives, then you will start getting my money again. But until then, I'm watching you all. Give me my kit, man. Bro. Also, uh, y'all with these lightning kids, I, I wasn't expecting your takes that y'all are actually fans of it. Uh, Flamagast. Like I am. Wow. Oof. Um, all right, so this match, uh, young ones, they balled out. Rico Lewis for City, Zabi, uh, Zabi, uh, Zabi Simmons for RB Leipzig. Loved watching Lil Bay Rico excel, immediately showing what he was made for made of he is a footballer despite his size he's got that dog in him a whole doberman mastiff in this bitch city struck first in the 24th minute thanks to the academy boys rico with a run and crosses back across goal Foden's volley shot was sumptuous salacious spectacular shit slapped the goal city scored in this entire match, all three were so good. Each one deserved its time and admiration. What do you say about Foden's goal with Lewis's assist? Uh, from there, I mean, we can honestly just go about the whole rest of the first half because there weren't anything else uh, as far as goal was. Um, you know me, I love a key pass, and this is why this Maybe. is why I love I miss Rodri because that. Cause he was the one that put it on a put that dime to Rico. To Rico ran onto 
and then cut back um and it was beautiful like just and you can t- like we've scored a couple different goals that way so like you can tell like that's obviously like something that pep has been working on in training um and i think um even in um the mix zone interview that uh Rico Lewis had he even said something to the effect of like um it is something that we worked out or that we have worked on like and I saw like in the pre in a previous action I saw early Holland and I tried to cross it up for in the when I got the ball in the same place and I tried to cross it up for him um and that didn't go well but I did see Phil like um in a lot of space alone so I knew that the next time um if we try if we all did the same thing like he would be there for the cutback and he was so um yeah like it was like obviously it's something that city has worked on and but it's it's working so um we should continue it but it it, to me it's like that's just an indication that it doesn't work without rodri there yes but i do want to stay on rico actually for a second um i clipped up a quick little interview it was everything but the quote that you're talking about, Tom Bomb. Just if you, when you just hear his voice, the, just the calm, the just the confidence. <laughs> I just love it so much. It makes me so happy. Obviously, it was a tough game that we came last year. Um, a bit of a similar scenario. We dominate the first half one 0 and then second half they come out and score. So it was important that we maintained our focus, you know, after the two poor, poor results previously, we needed a win today and, you know, we showed the character that we, we showed last season. Mainly just patience, you know, um, we knew we were going to have most of the ball, but it was just picking the right times, you know, play through the gaps, play on the outside, shoot, cross. It was just all about patience and the timing and the correct, you know, choice and decision. And saying patience multiple times, uh, the fact that he can say we had a poor result. Most 19 year olds aren't going to be like, yeah, we were playing poor recently because you don't want, you'd be afraid to maybe insult someone or something like that. The fact that he feels confident enough to be like, yeah, (laughs) we weren't great, but we got this figured out now. We're taking our time. These are the things that I'm focusing on. He feels comfortable enough on the mic to even just communicate these things. To me, it says a lot. I mean, I know it might be nothing burgers, not a tacos to people, but truly, I take a lot from stuff like this. Well, Tarek, how are you feeling on the first half of the match? Uh, The goal, my vote. You know, in all honesty, it's so it feels like this match is so long ago. Um, it's kind of really hard to kind of go back in my head and, and replay this whole thing, but I feel um you know Foden getting a goal, that's that's great. Um I really don't have too much to say because I, I don't really I'd have to go back and watch it and I haven't, so um I'll I'll just leave it alone at that. Got you. Second half begins, and immediately, uh, nonsense. Opendas, goal. Great one. Fantastic run. Beautiful pass. Kanji did what, honestly, he's done his entire city career. They run next to the striker, and then just big bad man him off the ball. Not this time. Got a shot off across goal. Ederson. You know you're my boy. You know I love you with everything I have. <laughs> like, truly, you're my boy. You got to do better in that situation. It was, it bummed me out. Uh, keep it moving. David Rom. That asshole. Well, he's not an asshole. That's too much. That's too much. Advice. Sorry, the Martini and he's falling out. Uh, that dude, he, <laughs> he's trash. The, and I mean that honestly. It's written in here. I'm allowed to say that. He's linked to City. I I was watching the whole match because I was excited to have us play him. Because when uh, Varnial was linked to City and we played them, Varnial played very well. He he was one of the few players who showed up. Similarly, in this match, Zabi Simmons showed up. David Rom got carded. 
Bernardo had him spinning in circles. I don't know how and why he was tied to City. I don't like it. Anyone who ever mentions his name tied to City again, I'm blocking that account. Period. It's just, I don't know, it's just vibes. Uh, subs were the reason City pulled away. Ake for Akanji, Daku for Grealish in the 72nd minute, Alvarez for Foden in the 79th minute. And speaking of Alvarez, Spider Man, Spider Man does whatever a spider uh, can, spins a web any size, catches seeds just like that. flies. Look out, here comes the Spider Man. That goal. Yeesh. Uh, goodness. Uh, the noise I didn't make when you scored. Silence. Truly. It, the moment he swung his foot for the goal in my head, I was like, oh, he's going for it. And then I was just confounded. <laughs> I said nothing. I thought nothing for a good 60 seconds. I was just basking in Alvarez's greatness. Uh, how did that goal make you feel? I know maybe not in the match overall, but I mean, when you saw the replay, Tarek, what, what, what well, did you think about yeah, I saw, I saw the, the goal and, you know, he's done this enough at this point that it's it should be no longer shocking to anybody, right? He's mm. got that quality in him. And You've seen it all over social media. He's probably been our best player, most consistent player throughout the course of this early part of the season so far. Um, so yes, I was super excited. Like, wow, that was it's a great hit. Um, but I'm getting to a place where I'm gonna stop being shocked by it or like, oh my god, I can't believe he did that. No, I absolutely believe he did that because that's who this dude is. He's um Dude is amazing, man. And he's so young. Yeah, this boy. So um I was at work when I watched the match. Um unfortunately, um that uh, our match was not the um uh match that was uh T U D N uh was showing. Um so oh. uh I had to watch on my phone. Um but that was fine because um as I was working throughout the day, um, there's a delay um, in Paramount Plus, so it was nice um, where you got the notification like Manchester City scores. It's like, oh, I should pay attention to my phone, and then you saw the like, and then you, <laughs> and then it, like it, it hadn't even shown the foul yet. Um, so it's like, oh, he got fouled. Oh, it's a free kick. It was like, I was like, oh, okay, um, and then like you see this beautiful free kick and i just like um you know jumped up and like my coworker was like tom are you watching two different soccer games at the same time while you're at work it's like yes <laughs> I, I i need you to to calm down and and let me celebrate my goal please <laughs> mind <Yes>. your business <laughs> yes oh man yeah it's it's beautiful and I'm, I mean, good at you. Look at that multitasking king. He's working, watch multiple games, just a little light work. Oh, I mean, my brain was scrambled eggs when I went home, but like that's a totally different story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so uh, yeah, more subs. Uh. Nunes uh, came on for Bernardo in the 87th minute, leading to Daku hitting the gritty, celebrating his goal, killing off the match. Ah, oh. <laughs> in the stream, in the match, the re the the recording, the broadcasting. There we go. It's going to get the word of it. Uh, it went from Daku hitting the gritty to uh, traditional RB Leipzig fans, if you understand what I'm saying, looking very upset. So the contrast was lovely. First of all, 
I very First much enjoyed all, that. I think that's hilarious. Like, I knew what you meant when you said traditional Leipzig fans, but the fact that you said traditional Leipzig fans, like, and knowing, like, what I know of, like, the 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 history of the club, I think that's hilarious. But still. I'm just, <laughs> I mean. I, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. <laughs> And that's all I want in the end is to communicate uh, my words with trying to offend as little as possible, but also still getting my point across because you got to, we know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, man, the match, it ended. Uh, we're now sitting in a better spot. I know the question wasn't if we would move on to the knockout stage, but it's because, you know, that's un precedent and and I just couldn't see a world where that happens. But at least it has to feel nice to be sitting in a better spot to secure our spot. Uh, I played it at the beginning of the intro. Pep said that our focus in October is the Champions League. So like how are we feeling now? I mean, is it are you so presumptuous and I mean I and I don't want to like set you up to make you sound like your papas or anything, but I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, are are we lo- looking that far ahead that maybe this match and the previous problems that we had or whatever, it's not really anything, and well, us moving on and us winning this game is not really that important. How do I want to answer that? Uh, um. I okay. This is so our next our next match back from the international break is against Brighton uh, at home. If if we win that match convincingly, because um, like we've lost the last two league matches, I I could see a scenario in which um, we go to young boys and we play a bunch of our young boys. Um, <laughs> um uh just because I, I I do think that at this point um you know it's it's really just making sure that you um you beat Leipzig twice, you beat them at the hardest place to play them, which is their place. Um and uh you've already beaten everyone else, so um yeah, we should be fine. Yeah. This is, I think he just said, this is the hardest, I guess, match out of the, out of the group just because it's away. So getting that, putting those three points on the board. um, Again, in my mind, there was never a question about us getting out of the group and probably topping the group, but you got to go through and execute and you got to do the work um, to get there. Um, You can't take anything for granted. Just ask my Miami Hurricanes. Um, And so, um, so yeah, they had to go out there and they did what they had to do. And so now it positioned us really well for what is to come. (laughs) Uh, Before we get into the match and everything, I took no that. I took no notes. And I took a map after the match. So this is definitely a match where we can just keep the conversation open and flowing. What we talk about, we talk about what we don't want to talk about, what we don't want to talk about. Uh, I'm trying to decide if, if I want to. Let's not get ahead of myself. So pre-match, there are two things that I wanted to play. First is a serious one. This is Pep. When he is asked about the absence of Rodri and KDB, and we overestimate a lot of tactics, the systems, and these kind of things, and the relations are so so important. And 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 when you have an absence as important like him, you have to find something inside of us to to find a solution. And this is what I try to do. It. So I'm, I'm not going to deny how important is is Rodri, like is Kevin, like is many players of many years are here. And, but they are not. We cannot start to crying and you know complaining. You have to find a solution. You got to find a solution. 
no crying. And I just really wish people on social media would let her back. Oh, goodness. Also, the second, everyone and by everyone, I mean, you Wolves fans, you crybabies, you, ugh. Oh, Pep called our player the Korean guy. He speaks Spanish. He's translating it to English. Do you understand how difficult it, it would be for him to say? And I even have a clip. This has nothing to do with even the Wolves player. This is just Pep trying to speak English. And make the, the reason why the third game, so the reason why the VAR implemented, was implemented is to make our game, you know, most, more, yeah, more, yeah, right, so. Bro, words are hard sometimes. He knew what was going to happen, and you forced him to try to say his name, and he said it wrong. So now that's twice he has insulted a fantastically nice footballer because you guys wanted to get at him and be like, say his name. No, bro, he's like, with my accent, the translation, it's hard. Spanish, say point, like, bro. Like, point, like, bro, point in Spanish, bro. Y'all need to get over yourselves. Like, I get we're the greatest team in the world. He's the best manager in the world. Us talking about you is exciting. Y'all need to relax. Relax. This match, where do we start? What do we want to talk about? <sighs> How are we feeling? Yeah. I think Charlie has said this on the show in the past um, that um, Pep views a lot like a lot of the fixtures against two match opponents um, are like uh, like I like when you go on the on the road to their place and then play them at home. Like he approaches them differently, but he, um, so on the road he is just like looking to play for a decent result, and even if that result is a draw, he will play for that draw. I felt like you saw the pep version of parking the bus in this particular match. Um, and it was shocking to watch. Like I, 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 I didn't know what other ways to to say for it. It was just like it was very, very shocking to watch. Um, I'm not gonna say that we didn't have. I know that I've seen um, the like. Oh, we're not creating anything. We have no ideas. Like I don't think that it wasn't that we didn't have any ideas. I just don't think that we were pulling off the ideas that we were looking to pull off. Um, uh, yeah, but I do think that, um, and I know that even on the pre-match show, I said that like um, Peps. Uh, I know that I'm like talking out of both sides of my mouth because I said uh, to Ken that we that Pep would does not change his tactics based off of home on the road. But I forgot uh, that that would be something that he had, that he has done in the past. We, you know, we've seen it. Um, we saw it against RB Leipzig last season um, when we had to play them in the knockout rounds. Um, uh, so, yeah, I would imagine that like based off of the personnel that he had um, based off of every, where everyone was um, since they were, heading into the international break um pep kind of parked the bus and you saw that it didn't look great it we have seen pep be pragmatic right where um to your point we're not necessarily we're playing to be compact we're playing to be tight uh defensively and be very much in control not let the game get stretched, whatever, because we don't want to give any life to the other team. Usually we do that when we're at the other team's home uh, or we're on the road. Um, and especially in Champions League, when you have uh, a two-legged uh, uh, match. So, yes, I understand what we were doing and why we were doing it. it doesn't mean that I like it any, you know, for that matter. Um, 
you have to accept it because you accept it all. But um, if you're if you're asking me to be honest, I feel like we can beat that team if we just. And again, yeah, they're they're going to try to counter us and whatever. But if we if we just play our and maybe that's that's the problem. Me saying we just play our game, but that is our game, I guess. Um, we. I think we run over this team. I don't. I don't think they're as good, and they, especially without Saka, without Saka and uh, Martinelli. I think that was the thing that stood out in the beginning. You know, from a from a lineup standpoint, and it's like, well, wait a minute, why aren't we going at these guys? Why aren't we not just trying to, you know, trying to nick the odd goal and try to hold on? No, let's go play full-throated let's just go and do everything man let's go after him but again that's why i'm not pep and that's why you know if you have me as your coach you're not going to win the treble right because i want to go i'm i'm more inclined to go after you um and sometimes you know the better part of valor is just kind of sitting back a little bit but doesn't mean i have to like it (laughs) but i think you know and again we know how this match ends right as much as I hate, again, as a as a fan base, as a group of supporters, we don't deal well with losing because it doesn't happen very often. But some of the takes on social media is just so stupid. You know, we said on Thursday in the live stream that, hey, this is early in the, in the season. Even if we won, it's not going to – there's no trophies at the end of this match. We happened to lose it. There still weren't any trophies at the end of the match. So let's just calm down for a moment. We know that we always play our way into the form that we go on those big runs. We never do that at the beginning of the season. We always do it to the second half of the season. We've got to play our way into that. And I think, you know, whether it be periodization or whatever, Pep has set the calendar out and the players are going to be in their best spots health wise physical wise everything in that second half of the season uh and we'll make that big run and we got we got a little spoiled because we won six or whatever it was six in a row or whatever it was um and we just thought well we're never gonna lose again it was gonna happen eventually um it sucks that we've lost so many in a row um but In the grand scheme of the season and what it all means, this doesn't mean anything. We still have a million and a half games left to play. So let's just let this let the season play out before we get all um, up in arms. Exactly. We're in third down a point to the first and second place team that's tied. Everything's fine. And aren't we still ahead of both of those teams on goal difference, too? Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Oh, no, we're not. So. My oh. bad. And it's and it's, it's two points. Okay. Well, then I'll cut all that part. <laughs> Everything magic. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Oh, no, no, you, no. Goal difference is correct. Um. Points is wrong. Okay. Um, okay. So all I got out of all of this is oh, Bernardo. He was a great listen. Every single time I hear him talk, I don't know. It's just his his voice is hilarious. I don't know. Um but this was his thoughts immediately after the match it could have gone both ways to be honest and uh, in the beginning we had our chances they also had our chance at the end you, you know in these games that little details matter and the deflection uh, makes the difference but it is what it is what we have to control is in my opinion for example in the second half a little decrease that we had in intensity mm. and in the way we press their their team and trying to press a bit higher because then you give them their midfielders and then defenders 
a bit more time to think and to put a better ball instead of when they're under pressure and they don't have as much time to, to put good balls. And uh, yeah, but it is what it is. We need to try and improve, check the games, improve in the, in the areas that we need to improve and, and keep going. That's all it is. Uh, all I took from the match was it was us. I don't think there was anything Arsenal in particular did. There was a moment in the match where I think it was Gabriel, maybe he ran forward and stole uh, like a long ball and chested him down. Like it was very beautiful. He was very elegant. He, and he like brought it down and even ran up the pitch a little bit. Like that was really cool. Declan Rice had a couple of tackles and that was like leading up to before the goal that they scored. There were a few key moments where I want to give them that credit. They did good. But it's just like, come on now. Like, no KDB, no Rodri. We have multiple players just coming back. I don't know. You put as much weight on this match that you want to. Everyone is do their own thoughts, their opinions. They're great. But it's just like, if you think City's going to fall apart, not win any trophies because of this 1-0 loss, just quit watching football because you're not built for it. I liked Nunez when he came on better than, um, than Kovacic. He kind of obviously made some boneheaded plays and could have got a red card. Um, but I, I really liked, I really liked um, Nunez when he came on his ability to carry the ball, which is one of those things that Pep has said about him uh, before anyway. So really paying attention to it and just seeing him, um, you know, dribbling past people. It's, it's really uh, in that midfield role. It's, it's pretty good to see. Um, again, you got to give him time, but, uh, I think there's a there's a player there, and we'll be interested to see what Pep can make out of him. That was the other point I wanted to make it about the match. I know that I said in the pre-match show that um, Michael Oliver is going to make at least one decision a match that um, you don't know whose favor it's going to go in, but um, it's going to change the complexion of the match. It just so happened that he made two in this particular match. Um, Kovic is just certainly um, lucky that he did not get a second yellow. Also, shout out to um, Jesse and their hilarious joke um, that they wrote on Twitter about um, uh, Alex Greenwood and Lauren Hemp sacrificing themselves to the red card gods so that Kovic could stay on. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hearty chuckle out of that. Thank you very much, friend. Um, also, um, the decision to not play advantage um, when Rico uh, put the ball in the back of the net. Yes. Um, uh, that clearly worked in uh, Arsenal's favor. Um, so, um, that did happen. Um, I wasn't wrong. Um, but, uh, yeah, the results still sucked. Did you guys hear about, um, I guess, uh, Kyle and... Uh, yeah, he had a gun, too, with a couple of the uh, yeah staff members, city staff members. Like the staff or something like I've that. I've said he knows what... Yeah, he said he knows what happened, but he won't talk about it. And what I will say is Kevin looked really pissed at Ruben Diaz in the match. He was hot at Ruben Diaz multiple times in the match. And people keep telling me to chill about Ruben Diaz. No, and I've no, been on his no, ass no, because no, for a we, while. That, that is that is a discourse that we may need to start because like he did not play he, he I let let's start it now. We'll put a pin in it because I mean we're getting close to the end of the episode. We still got to do shocks, awesome applause. 
But I, trust me, when I say I'm going to be watching him like a motherfucking hawk, I, like, because it's just, it was just, it was simple things. It was like headers where he's just heading the ball wherever. And I, again, what I said, what I loved about Ruben was he seemed to know who he was and he did what he did and he just did it well. He's just, he's doing too much now. He's trying to get up. He's trying to make these runs. He's trying to make these passes. Maybe, and I'm sure Pep is telling him to do it. But also, like, you need to know yourself. He's ma he's making some passes that you should, like, bro, just chill. Just be the defensive dynamo, the brick wall that you have always been for us. We don't need you doing all these passes and stuff. Stop it. Chill. Relax. Said I wasn't gonna yell. I got my my voice raised a little bit about Ruben Diaz. Uh, okay. Wow. <clears throat> Shocked all. A really good applause. Tottenham, look at you. Top of the table. Arsenal. All the celebrating those booters did to just be sitting in second when really. The rivals they think is city, they should be looking at Tottenham. They're in your city, they're in your area. You both haven't really won nothing. So it's just like, why are you comparing yourself to us? Do you not do that? It's just not logical, but go off, I guess. Uh, city, we're at third. Liverpool, fourth. Villa, fifth. Brighton, sixth. West Ham seven. Sitting in relegation stations. Burnley. Burnley. Oh my god. Uh, this season of Burnley in the Premier League is destroying whatever positive cred company has done. Except for I'm sure people on the behind the scenes who actually know what's going on I'm sure still love the company. But for just traditional fodder it's not looking good for them. Uh, Burnmouth and Sheffield are also with well, them at hold the bottom. On. Before you, I mean, granted, I have this probably company was probably one of my favorite, right? So I, oh, I have I, this I love big them. love for, but, for. I mean, it is what it is. But I, Sorry, I'm with I you. Don't want, no, I don't want to you off. no, no, I'm with you. But they had the lead, and then they gave up an own goal to tie for Chelsea to tie it up. Then it's a penalty. I mean. How much of that can you really put on Vinny or his coaching or whatever? Um, maybe there's some of it, but I just feel like there's a lot of, you know, breaks that just didn't go their way. And before you know it, you go from having the lead to, oh, wait, now we're getting swamped. But go ahead. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. But when it comes time to all of those loot, the losses, you don't necessarily go, hey, you had a tough break in the Chelsea match. They're just like, you lost these matches, guy. I'm sorry. And that's just how I'm, I just an overview. I'm rooting for him. But trust me, and I'm rooting for him. Not in that club. Uh, I think company will be fine even if he leaves Burnley. I, he'll still find somewhere to go. He'll bounce back. But company the city has definitely been derailed big time. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I know I, that I agree with. And I think that it was always too soon. It was always yes. too soon. Um, yes. And so he needs the experience of, of coaching at the highest level. Now, the reality is he's trying to play – in a city esque way without city esque players. And, you know, it's great in the championship, not so great in, in uh, the premier league. And I don't know how much he's compromised on his principles or as how as to how he wants them to play. Could he come in and, and just be like, Oh, we're going to go back to Sam Dice ball and we're just going to lock down everything and whatever. Well, maybe, but that's not who he is, which is weird because he's a he's a defender by trade. But you know he's not. I don't. He doesn't want to play that type of football 
and that may be the reason why he doesn't get some of the results that maybe he might need in your like to your point to be able to keep his job which is why i think that he would be better served as opposed to coaching at burnley he needs to try and find another job in another big five league um be it a france be it a spain be it a italy germany um and learn kind of like learn how to grind through a season um with maybe like mid table talent um and like you know make a couple cup runs um and then come back to city but like it's going to take based off of like this current trajectory it's probably going to take at least three more jobs before he's ready for that yeah it's definitely going to be a longer process unless when you get to a spot where they're really like hey we can grow together but i personally don't ever want to see city at that spot especially after pep <laughs> oh my gosh uh i mean i guess uh anything else before uh premier shock all and applause before we get out of here um, I'm going to just go against everything I just said because, you know, I was trying to support my man Vinny. Uh, but uh, kudos to not even Chelsea, the club, but to Raheem Sterling and to Cole Palmer, who showed up and uh, got yeah. busy for uh, for them in that win. So, you know, kudos to those guys. Again, always a blue in my mind. So, you know, Sterling got his goal. Uh, Cole Palmer got trusted to take the penalty kick, scored it, converted yeah. it, and um, got the assist uh, later on. So ends up with a goal yeah. and an assist. Um, again, we always knew he had something. He just needed a chance to show it. He needed a manager that was going to give him a run of games. And it looks like Pochettino, who's always – done well with young players to begin with um, is giving him that. And so kudos to him. It doesn't mean that we should have kept him. It doesn't mean that, oh, we should have, you know, kept him over Doku or anything like that. It just means that he just needed a chance to, to go do his thing. He's getting it. And so far he's showing um, his talent and, you know, kind of getting, turning some of the, you know, some of the Chelsea fans who initially were like, oh, why are we buying him? Yada, yada, boom, boom. Now it's like, oh, wait a minute. This guy's really good. Um, I saw someone say, oh, he's who we thought Havertz was going to be. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, I hope I hope it continues for those guys. Hope they thrive, of course, except for when they play us. Um, and it goes from there. Yeah, but in that City Burnley match, the – <laughs> the city, the Chelsea, yeah, the subconscious, yep. Chelsea Burnley match. The city influence is all over the place with company James Trafford, Sterling, Cole Palmer. Like, truly, you're welcome, Premier League, Arsenal. Oh, um, so, uh, my uh, sh- I'm actually gonna go to uh, WSL. Uh, my shock on flaws match of this weekend was actually on. Friday, um, Manchester City or Manchester United yeah. and Arsenal played to a two-two draw. That was um, absolutely wild. Um, Arsenal um, should consider themselves lucky to get the result of a draw because they did not play. Um, Manchester United did play them off the pitch, um, in my in my opinion, um, and they didn't play. And Manchester United did not play particularly well. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, our, uh, I'm sure that Treb is, uh, probably, um, not feeling too great about, uh, Jonas Eideval right now. And, um, it's very interesting to see, um, even though I know he did just sign an extension, um, but like, it's interesting to see, uh, people call for his job in the same way that, um, we have been calling for Gareth Taylor's job. So, um. Yeah, it's been um and like it was interesting to also hear um Jesse um say when on the episode with them uh that in a lot of ways Jonas and Gareth are basically the same manager, but just not necessarily like one is getting less heat than the other. So like um yeah. Yeah. So 
Uh, it is interesting to see that he turned up more on the other manager than him. Right. I was, that's, I was very shocked. <laughs> like, yeah, not that bad. Jonas, get them out of here. And I was like, wait, oh, all right. I like this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shoot. Great job, guys. It's a fun little episode. We killed it. Um, follow our social media accounts on the app, formerly known as Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, YouTube, all those things. Uh, links to all of them. It's in the show notes. There's a little link tree link. You tap it, and it just is all of our stuff, all of our upcoming fan fest live shows, social media, all those things. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to give comments, hit the thumbs up. Excuse me. If you prefer audio only, rate, review the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or however you enjoy your podcasts. We'll review. We will read your review on a new episode of Shades of Blue. My fantastic host, let the listeners know where to find Joe. You can find me on Twitter at Tarek Peterson, uh, T-A-R-I-K-P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N. Uh, or if you happen to be on threads, you can find me there, TK Peterson 12. Um, you can find me me uh username layer of Kiara Keating's baby hairs on uh Twitter uh at Tom Bomb816 um IG same name. And I am Crunk Phoenix on on Twitter X and on everything else I am the Crunk Chocolate C R U N K C H O C O L A T E and you know the vibes, Shady Gang, Shady Gang, Shady Gang.